Every now and then teachers like to throw in a sneaky little first principle question which has a fraction and this can be a confusing one if you haven't seen it before but it's very easy once you've seen how it works. So we're going to use we're going to determine the first derivative and so what we can say is that f of x with a little apostrophe over there or whatever it's called and that's going to be equal to the lim as h goes to 0 and then you would have to write out the formula alright now on the side I'm just gonna do the f of x plus h first as I've noticed a lot of students like to do that so f of x plus h means that you take the equation and wherever you see x you replace it with x plus h so there it is then I'm gonna put this back in the place of f of x plus h and so now from the for the rest of the question we have to write lim as h goes to zero that's very important and so in the place of f of x plus h we're going to have 2 over x plus h minus f of x well that's just the original equation so that's just 2 over x and then all of that is over h so now I want you to ignore the bottom so ignore this part just let's zoom into this part over here well, there we have two fractions, and when you are minusing or adding two fractions, you need a common denominator, or a lowest common denominator. So your lowest common denominator there is just going to be x, and then x plus h. So this two will be multiplied with x, and this two will be multiplied with x plus h. And then you can write both of them over the common denominator, which is x x plus h. If that's a little confusing, then that's simply because this is more of a grade 10 kind of topic, and I know some of you in grade 12 do struggle with those topics. And then you never really want to multi you don't want to multiply out your common denominator, you want to leave it just like that. But what we can do is neaten up the top a little bit so we can multiply that negative into the bracket. And so the two x's cancel, and so what we end up with is negative 2h over x x plus h so now I'm going to take this expression and put it back into the equation or into the sum and so that's going to be lim as h goes to 0 and that whole top part is now going to be written as minus 2h over x x plus h and that's all over h so now here's where students do struggle a little but all you need to identify is that we have a fraction on top of another fraction h can just be written as h over 1 so how do we simplify or how do we handle a fraction on top of a fraction so in earlier grades you would have learned that you keep the top number then you multiply and you flip the bottom number over like that so we're going to do the same approach now and so that's going to be lim as h goes to 0 of negative 2h over x x plus h times 1 over h. Now before you start multiplying across what you need to realize is that these two h's can cancel and so what we have is limit as h goes to 0. Notice I'm writing this the whole time you have to do that and so at the top we're simply going to be left with minus 2 and at the bottom we're going to be left with that over there. Now that the h in the denominator has been cancelled we can let h go to 0 and so that's going to give us minus 2 over oh no we don't have to write this now because we're actually going to let x I mean h go to 0 and so that's going to be x plus 0 and so what we end up with is minus 2 over x squared and so therefore f apostrophe x is going to be minus 2 over x squared so once again with limits you should always try plug the h as 0 in the beginning, but it's never going to work out with this first principle formula because you're going to end up with a 0 in the denominator. So then what we did is we, we saw that at the top we had two fractions, and so we went and got a common denominator, combined them, and then we had a fraction on top of a fraction at one point. So we used the rule that says we can keep the top fraction the same, multiply, and then we flip the bottom fraction over, the h is cancelled, and once the h's have cancelled, that's a good thing, because then you can let h go to zero, and you won't end up with some error in your denominator.